On March 15, 1992, I woke up with tubes in my arms, up my nose, and a nurse hovering over me with a big smile on her face saying, hi, you're in intensive care at Miami Valley Hospital in Dayton, Ohio. Do you know where you are? Honolulu? Honolulu? God bless morphing, right? <laughs> Have you ever had a regret? Dealt with a past failure? Or had a life-altering trauma that has weighed you down? That, on that day, in that hospital, my weight problem crossed the line from physical to emotional and mental. I've always carried a lot of weight. Not the physical, mental and emotional weight. According to the National Science Foundation, we have 50 to 70,000 thoughts a day and 70% of them are negative. How do we cross the lines from negative to positive? How do we understand our weight problem? How do we shed that weight? How many licks does it take to get to the center of a Tootsie Pop? You know, I don't know that we'll ever really know, but I know this. At 19 years old, I was dealing with an entirely different weight problem, the weight of trauma. About five hours later, I remembered what state I was in, and I don't necessarily mean my state of mind either. Once the morphine wore off, I remembered that I was a member of the University of Indianapolis speech team. And I'm still one event short of going to nationals. The only reason I joined the team was the all-expense-paid trip to nationals. A week of girls drinking. Girls. Food. I mentioned girls, right? So here's the problem. My team is not going to any other meets the rest of the year, except nationals. So I did what any college student would do. I annoyed my coach until she gave in. She gave me permission to go to a last chance qualifier at Ohio State University. I didn't really want to go alone. So I asked my friend Troy to come with me. Troy Gambrell is a stocky, red-headed kid from Plymouth, Indiana. <laughs> and he'll tell you all about it, too. Well, that and that time that he sacked the starting quarterback for Notre Dame when he played high school football. I knew that Troy would help me because he was my friend. Who ate my last bag of Doritos with the three dollars that I had left? Troy. Who would walk the girls back to the dorms to make sure that they were safe? Troy. Who stayed up with me? Watching Caddyshack for the 59th time while drinking margaritas until 3 o'clock in the morning? Come on. Who stayed up with me? He sure did. That week, we spent the entire week working to cram for nationals. And on that morning, we stopped at McDonald's. I had sausage McMuffin, two hash browns, and a Diet Coke. Hey, I had to cut the calories somewhere, right? We get back in the car, 
And Troy switches seats with me. Unbelievable. We never made it to Ohio State University. There was a freak snowstorm. We hit a fence. We hit a tree. According to the American Red Cross, the average adult has 10 pints of blood in their body. I arrived at the hospital with one. I broke my left femur in three places. It takes a sledgehammer to break a femur. And that's what I remembered. In that hospital on that day, I looked for the nurse and I said, where's Troy? Where is Troy Gambro? Troy? Troy died on impact. At 19, I should have been thinking about girls and good times. And all I could think about was, it's my fault. Have you ever felt the weight of the world on your shoulders? Maybe you've had a regret, or a past failure, or a traumatic life experience that's weighed you down. That is what I and millions feel, not the physical, the emotional, and the mental, and it's real. So how do we overcome? How do we shed that weight? Dr. Russell T. Jones of Virginia Tech University who specializes in psychological trauma claims that the consequences of such weight can result in PTSD and depression. So what do we do? How do we deal with our weight problem? There were two weights that I was dealing with. The first was guilt. I asked him to go. I am the reason that Troy's not here. He's not here because of me. It was through the second weight problem that I had that got a better understanding of how to deal with that guilt. We stopped at McDonald's. We switched seats. I, I shouldn't be here right now. Is the difference between life and death really a sausage McMuffin, two hash browns, and a Diet Coke? What does it mean? Why am I here? In his book, Man's Search for Meaning, author, psychiatrist, and Holocaust survivor, Viktor Frankl talks about how in moments of trauma, we search for meaning. We look for ways to find happiness in our suffering. For over a decade, I suffered. Was I a good person? Had I allowed a good life? Have I made a difference? And then I remembered something. Troy Gambrell helped me find my voice at a time when I didn't believe I had one. And he wanted me to help others find their voice. In 2008, I joined Toastmasters International. It's a global world organization that helps people with their speaking and communication skills. 
I didn't just join to speak. I joined to help others. Every time I present, Troy's with me. Every time I help someone with their presentations, I pass on a little bit of the spirit of Troy Gambrell to each and every one of them. And today, I've passed him on to you. I had found purpose and meaning, but there was still some guilt. It wasn't about me. It needed to be about helping others. The guilt led to Google, and Google led to the Kiwanis Memorial Scholarship for Troy Gambro. To date, Kiwanis has given out $20,000 or more in Troy Gambrell's name. It's given to the outstanding speech high school student at Plymouth High School for their college education. I wanted to help, so I called them. And a few days later, I got an email. They had contacted Troy's sister, Pam. Would it be okay if they gave her my email? There is a part of me, there's a part of me that didn't want to do it. What if she still blames me? Could I live with that? And that's when I remembered, it's not about me. For decades, I had suffered with emotional, mental anguish and trauma and that weight. And Pam Gambrell had spent the years praying for someone who could tell her about the final hours of her brother's life. I told her, I told her everything. And that I was sorry. I needed forgiveness. And she, she needed closure. We all had carried weight. Through Pam, I got to know the other members of the Gambrell family. Well, that and the miracle that is Facebook, of course. <laughs> there are no quick fixes and mental, emotional, and traumatic weight. But in order to heal, you need to cross the lines. You need to make a difference. And to do that, you need to throw your weight around to deal with your emotional and traumatic weight. What will you do to solve your weight problem? Are you willing to tip the scales to find answers and meaning? Will you understand your weight problem? I've always carried, well, okay, I've always carried a lot of weight. But whether you're a size two or a size 52 inch waist. Okay, fine, 62. 62 inch waist. No matter the size. As long as you find answers and meaning 
we can all learn to understand our weight problem.